Hello friends, it's Miss Brenda. Since we are already in spring season, why not read some books about gardens? If we remember, spring season is the best time for plants to start sprouting and for flowers to start blossoming. So today's story is titled, Badger's Perfect Garden. One spring morning, Red Squirrel found Badger surrounded by dozens of jars. The jars were filled with seeds. The seeds looked hopeful, just like Badger. What are you doing with all those seeds, Badger? Getting, getting ready to plant. I gathered them late last summer and kept them in jars all throughout, all through the fall and winter. Now I'm going to plant a perfect garden. Red Squirrel looked closer. They're all different. Yes, all kinds, green and brown, flat and round, bumpy and smooth, whirly curly and straight as my whiskers. Where did you find them? Some from Weasel's garden, some from the wildflowers near Dormouse's house. Some stuck themselves to my fur and some floated in the wind. You have so many, said Red Squirrel. You'll need help planting. Weasel brought his favorite rake. Red Squirrel helped Dormouse gather string. Badger studied his garden plan. We have to make sure the ground is perfectly smooth, said Badger. Everyone weeded and raked. When the earth was as smooth as a forest pond in winter, Badger pushed big sticks into the dirt. Red Squirrel and Dormouse stretched string between the sticks to make rows. Be sure the rows are perfectly straight, said Badger. Weasel found a twig to make holes for the seeds. Bumpy seeds in this row, round ones here. Keep the whirlies together, Badger directed. When the seeds were planted, Badger invited his friends to a celebration. Everyone enjoyed muffins and mulberry juice. Badger imagined the plants that would grow in perfect rows in his perfect garden. The next day, the sky sent showers. Badger smiled. The day after that, it sent heavy rain. Badger worried. The day after, the day after, it sent a downpour. Badger grabbed his umbrella and rushed outside. He ran up and down the roads trying to cover his seeds. The rain kept pouring. Badger flung himself across the rows, doing his best to hold the earth together. Sticks and strings collapsed. The ground began to slide. Ah, shouted Badger. Red Squirrel, Dormouse, and Weasel came running. My beautiful seeds have washed away, Badger sniffled. Seeds will float on the wind again when the sunniest days come, comforted Red Squirrel. After the wildflowers bloom, there will be seeds to collect, said Dormouse. We can gather seeds when my vegetables ripen, said Weasel. Collecting seeds is hard work. And besides, I'll have no perfect garden this summer, said Badger. Badger could not be consoled. He stayed in his house, busying himself with this and that. One summer day, in the middle of his afternoon nap, Badger heard a clamoring at his door. Badger! Come look, come look, cried Red Squirrel, Dormouse and Weasel. Your seeds found another place to grow. Those can't be my seeds, said Badger, rubbing his eyes. They're all mixed up. They just rearranged themselves, said Red Squirrel. If you hadn't planted them over there, they wouldn't be here. Badger stared at the hot hodgepodge of colors. 
the jumble tumble of shapes and sizes. They made him feel jumbly and tumbly too. It looks like a celebration. It's the most perfect garden of all. And because the friends loved celebrations, they ran into the garden for a hodgepodge of garden games, jumbly tumbly dancing, and muffins and mulberry juice. The end.